Uh, today we're going to introduce a new component, Logstash. Uh, in this example, we're going to have to download a Logstash. Uh, you can choose your version that you you know want, but today we'll be using Atar GZ on my Mac, my local environment. Um, let's. Uh, I've already got Elasticsearch and Kibana still running from our previous episode. But let's just talk about the data we're going to be ingesting real quick. It's going to be some zip code data. So there's a zip code in the CSV. Uh, and there's a, a latitude and longitude. That's just basically the data we're going to be loading in. All right. Um, I'm going to unzip the log stash that I downloaded. And um, we're not going to do any configuration inside of that. Uh, but we are going to talk a little bit for a few minutes about the, the log stash configuration itself once this is done extracting. Okay. So let's look at the uh, zip geo uh, configuration file that we're going to use. All right, so you could call it whatever you want, and you'll see in the command line how, how it runs. But there's three sections to any log stash uh, flow, and we call them pipelines. They're called pipelines. Uh, there's an input section, a filter, and then the output. So in the input, we're defining an input plugin called standard input. And we're going to pipe that from the Unix command line into log stash because it, we've told it to expect standard input, and then do some stuff, and then put it to, to the elastic search in the output. Uh, in our filter section, we're gonna, this is where all the transformation takes place. We are defining the CSV filter to say it's a it's a comma separated file, uh, and define the columns for that: the zip code, latitude, and longitude, which I just showed you. Uh, next, we're going to mutate that. We're going to say this is a latitude in the latitude field. We want to make sure that's a float and the longitude as well. Then we're going to add a new field. It's called location. And it will include latitude and longitude because we're going to want that in some of the stuff that we'll be uh, doing in Kibana. We need something to represent a location that has both latitude and longitude. And then last, uh, in the output section, uh, is, is an output to Elasticsearch. We're saying send it to uh, this index zip geo on an Elasticsearch index at this location at hosts uh, for uh, localhost 9200, our Elastic stack that we've been running with. Okay. Uh, so we've got that running. Uh, before we actually go in and start uh, the pipeline to get Logstash uh, consuming this data, I want to go back over to Kibana real quick. Uh, let's log in there, Kibana. In Dev Tools, and there's one last thing I'd like to do before we get running, and that's to set a uh, a template. Uh, and a template in Elasticsearch is basically saying, uh, I'm going to give it just some, some arbitrary name. In this case, it's going to be something that represents the data. Uh, in the template, I'm saying anything that comes in as zip geo, the pattern zip geo. I want it to have some settings and some mappings. We'll cover the mappings in a second. But I really want just one shard and no replication, because this is just a demo environment, right? Uh, I want one shard to hold this data, and now I'm going to configure the mappings. So um, you saw in, my, in, the, in the, the data that we had a zip code field. I want that to be interpreted as an integer. And I also want location to be interpreted as a geo point, or mapped to a geo point, right? And I'll go ahead and hit the uh, play button on this. Acknowledge true means that it was accepted. And now we can start ingesting the data into Elasticsearch. All right, and it's not needed for every use case to do something like that, um, but I'm being more specific about what I want to do with the GeoPoint data, so I, I want to make sure those mappings are there. All right, so I created a little script called do it, and do it just casts the CSV into a pipe that logs dash. Now, defining with the minus F argument, here's my configuration file. So let's just let do it do its work. And while that's running, I'm going to go back over and uh, run another command to just basically cat, uh, using a cat command to say get um, get my indices. And I'll hit the play button. And it's not there yet, but once Logstash initializes, uh, receives the standard output, it will show up here. Let's go back and take a look real quick. Yep, there it is. It's starting to go. So if we uh, go ahead and hit this again, maybe hit it a couple more times. There you see it. Our, our zip geo index is shown up in Elasticsearch. Uh, and now we can start using some of that data. How can we validate really quick? We'll run a zip geo underscore search. We'll call the search API on this index. I'll hit the play button. And I will get back uh, some data. Uh, one of the things I like to look at is the hits. And it's 33,144, which is the exact number of rows in my CSV. So I have received all of the data. Uh, I've got the latitude. And it looks like a float because it doesn't have quotes around it. It's not treating it as a 
factoring, and the same with longitude. And my location uh, field is also there too from Logstash. So what do we do with this? If this was a simple search. What can we do as far as fun? Uh, I have a query set up here that is a, a geodistance query. So I can basically say one kilometer from uh, this latitude and longitude in this query. Let's find out how many zip codes are actually in, in that distance. And I get one because there's only one zip code 30075 within one kilometer of, of these, these, this determined or predetermined latitude and longitude. What if it was one mile because we don't really use kilometers in, in Georgia, which is where that zip code is. What if I do one mile? I didn't have to change anything else and I still get the same results. So uh, uh, Elasticsearch is accepting multiple types of inputs. What if I do one million inches from uh, this latitude and longitude? Let's see what that does. Oh, we get a list. And, and there's the zip code that I would expect in there as well as a bunch of other zip codes within one million inches of this latitude and longitude. So that's kind of cool. We can play around with geodistance to figure out where things are relative to a particular location. Uh, another type of uh, query <clears throat> that can be done in Elasticsearch is a geo bounding box. So if you've ever selected something in a in a graphic or on a screen somewhere in a program, you know you select the upper left and lower right, and you've got a box, right? Well, we're doing this within this query. So this is the latitude and longitude of the upper left hand corner of that box, and then the bottom right hand corner is latitude and longitude. And we can select uh, and we can run this query, and we get uh, a geo bounding box that again contains the 30075 because I I've selected these coordinates beforehand, uh, as well as a number of other um, uh, zip codes that were in that box. So now that we've got this data ingested and we've been able to play with it using uh, dev tools, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's go start looking at some visualizations. Uh, before we do that, though, um, it's, it's, uh, it's something worth noting that we need to go in and tell Kibana we have an index and uh, we'd like you to start using it for visualization. So we use uh, in Kibana uh, we go into the management section and we click on index patterns in the Kibana section, create an index pattern. And you, you can already see down here, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's already knows that there's some, there's some other indexes out there that it, that it's suggesting, but I'm going to go into the index pattern, uh, entry, text entry type zip geo. It says success. It matches one pattern. Um, I'm going to hit next. Because um, this is not uh, a time series data, I don't really have to select a time field. But if I wanted to, I could. Uh, I'm just going to use the I don't want to use this time filter and create the index pattern. Once the index pattern is created, I can actually inspect this if I want to. Uh, there's two pages of this here. I can actually, let's make it one page. I can see that uh, just one of the things I really am focused on is the fact that my lo location field maps to a geo point, and it does. And so now I can start creating visualizations uh, in Kibana. So let's go to the Visualize tab, hit the plus, plus button, and I'm going to choose, um, you know, we've got a number of visualizations in here, but let's, let's just choose the coordinate map. And I will choose my index pattern of zip geo. I don't have to change the metric section for this uh, visualization, but I do want to add some details around the, the, the geo coordinates in the bucket type. So I'll, so I'll click on the geo coordinates aggregation or, or, or bucket. I will choose a geo hash aggregation and then the field that I need, uh, which is the location field. That's what we, we mapped it to in the mappings for that, for that particular index pattern template. So I'll, I'll click location and then I'll hit the play button. You see, I get I get some data here. I get I get some circles uh, of varying sizes. Uh, the reason for that is uh, by default we'll we'll create you know Kibana will create a, uh, a a series of buckets that have uh, circles that are um, you know different sizes based on the number of uh, data points within that region. But I'm going to change that by clicking on options and instead of scaled circle markers, I'm just going to say shaded, and hit the play button again. I'm going to zoom in on the United States. Uh, if uh, I didn't say it before, this is a list of zip codes for the United States. Uh, and so there it is rendered there on the screen. I'm going to save this visualization away by clicking on save. I'm going to call it uh, zip viz. Save that away. And now I'm going to go and create a dashboard uh, of, with this data. 
So I'm going to, you know, there could be other dashboards in here, but right now I'm just going to say create new dashboard. I don't have a name for it yet, but let's add a visualization here by clicking add. Uh, we'll go search for my zip viz visualization. That's a tongue twister. Um, and then I'm going to expand this a little bit so that everyone can see this a little bit better. All right. So there's uh, the two visualizations, or I'm sorry, the two types of searches I showed you earlier are, you know, basically distance from a point and a box. But there's one other one uh, that is kind of like making use of this visualization, no pun intended. We can actually uh, show this to you. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, a polygon type search. So I've selected the polygon and I'm going to trace the state of Georgia. Now you can zoom in and get really close to the state boundaries, but I'm just doing this rather quickly. I'm probably in in the uh, bordering states, but uh, and then the last um, point I can just say finish and it'll complete it. It'll just draw a straight line. And so there's there's the boundaries around the state of Georgia. I can zoom in a little bit more and kind of see that that there's all of the zip codes that we have uh, in the state of Georgia. Uh, now the other part of this is you saw, you know, I I entered, you know, we had uh, JSON in the Dev Tools representing that query and you probably want to do like well what is you know you, you're asking yourself well what is the um you know what is the representation for that in a query dsl uh because i want to do the same thing right so i can go into this uh, once we've selected this in, in kibana i can go up to this filter that was created and hit edit and actually if i if it's not there already i can click on edit query dsl and i get the 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 query query DSL right here. So I can go back over and I'll copy this and go back over to uh, to Kibana, populate that uh, query that I, or one of the queries I had before, and then do the same thing in there and just get back the representation of uh, the data set that I'm looking for. So that's our, uh, that's the example and demo for uh, Fun with Geo. Thanks for watching.